Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.4.1 has been out for over a week at this point and iOS 17.4.1 revision or re-release has been out for a couple of days. There's even more to talk about since the iOS 17.4.1 is out what's new video and we'll talk about that as well as the overall experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video there's an incredible 24,000 votes or more and 449 comments. I've read every single single comment to determine what the overall experience is like, whether that's battery life, bugs, and more. But first let's talk about some Apple news, some new features, and then we'll talk about the overall experience. Now, Apple actually has a new phishing scam, which I talked about in a separate video the other day, and it was found by Krebs on security. This particular issue was affecting people where it would pop up sort of an option where it says reset your password, then someone would call you and try and gain access to your account. Apple actually fixed this quickly after a few days. In fact, the initial report was released on the 26th and then a few days later, yesterday on the 29th, they actually released the fix for this. 9 to 5 Mac actually said they've heard from Apple's spokesperson about this issue. The company knows about the few recent cases of these phishing attacks and Apple is take an action again to solve the problem. So that's something that's been resolved. It's great. Apple did a great job here and it's well done. So I'm glad to see that they actually did this and it's really great for those that were affected by it. So thankfully we shouldn't have to have an issue with this and probably we won't need a separate update to fix this as well. Also something else I wanted to mention is Apple actually found out who a leaker was and then sued them this past week. They joined Apple in 2016. They leaked features and sensitive information such as the journal app and apparently they were uncooperative and Apple is going after them. So that's something that is going to result probably in more surprises for us as that's less information leaking. So I know many people will be happy about that. I miss the days when Apple was sort of surprising us at every single event and we didn't know what was to be expected. Now we know with iOS 18, RCS support is coming. However, Google actually confirmed when it's coming and they said later this fall. That was quickly taken down, but it was discovered as you can see here. And then again, it was taken down and revised so that they didn't have that information going out. But it looks like this fall with iOS 18, we'll get RCS. In a previous update, Apple added the ability for iPhones to be updated in the box while they're in the Apple store. This makes sure that your phone is up to date. You won't have to do this while you're setting it up and Apple can just place this in a machine that sort of updates it over the air. You can see this as Mac rumors got a first look at it and it looks something like this where it can sort of talk to them update them and make sure they're at the recent versions. So this is a great update and something I think we'll see with the next iPhones when they're released, or if you're picking one up soon, you should have a newer version on it. Apple launched a new website for developers as well this week to allow them to learn to code a little bit better with Swift. So it's a whole new updated website where it says, get started. Developing Swift tutorials are a great first step toward a career in app development using Xcode, Swift and Swift UI. So if you wanted to learn about that, this is available. I'll link it in the description. It's great to see them keep giving more and more information. We saw this with devices previously. Now we're seeing it with development as well. Now, as far as new features this week, well, there's something to talk about with iOS 17.4. Apple previously updated different devices, not just the iPhone 15, to allow for Qi 2 wireless charging to comply with that new standard. Now it looks like it's moved over to the iPhone 12 models. So if you have a Qi 2 compatible charger, it will now charge at 15 watts when you place them on there, whether it's this Anchor charger, a Belkin charger, or some others. So if you've actually got an iPhone 12 Pro or any of the 12s, with MagSafe wireless charging, this should now work properly and you should be able to get the full 15 watts when charging. So that's a great new feature and I'm glad to see they've added it. Another new feature, and I'm not sure when this was added, it was found by my friend Brom. He actually noticed that when you're playing a podcast, so maybe you were listening to this podcast, the Waveform podcast, and it's on your Apple Watch, it now tells you how much time is left. So you'll see here there's an hour and 20 minutes, and then it's counting down the seconds, and then it just faded away. So that's a nice new feature. I'm not sure exactly when it was added, maybe watchOS 10.4, but let me know if you noticed that as well. Now, as far as releases this week, we had iOS 17.4 one revision or re-release. This is something Apple has done before with re-releases. However, I don't think they've done this at least in quite some time where they only made it available on their website for developers or if you need to reinstall it. So if we go to their Apple website, you can see they've updated the websites themselves 
not just the developer one, but the public facing one here as well with the new build of 21E237. However, in order to install that build, you actually have to use a Mac or Windows computer with iTunes. So you can use the Finder in Mac and you'll see it looks like this. You install it and you're good to go. However, if you don't have a computer, you're not able to do it unless you bring it to an Apple store and maybe have an issue. They started signing iOS 17.3.1 again, and maybe that's why they released this to fix issues with updating when people had boot loops or possibly some issues with face ID that I know some others have had. So it could resolve a few different issues. However, it looks like it's a little bit better for some people. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but that's something that's a little bit odd and it's still not available over the air. If you haven't updated yet and you're on 17.4, you'll see an over the air version, but it will have a different build. If you go into your settings, go to general and then about, you'll see on the left under the iOS version, I have 17.4.1 with a build number of 21E236, where on the right, I have a build number of 21E237, which is the one installed with a Mac. The one on the left is the one available over the air. Why they haven't updated it yet, I'm not sure, but it looks like, and let me know if you've seen a difference, but it looks like it's still only available through the developer site or if you're restoring your phone. Now, Apple updated a few other things this week as well. We had the announcement of WWDC that's on Apple's website or the developer app where we know when it's going to be WWDC 2024 on June 10th through the 14th. I had a separate video going over what we can expect there. So that's great news as well. Apple also announced the Swift student challenge winners on Thursday. So those that actually applied and sort of wanted to win that, they also get an invite to the event as well. Those were announced also. Apple also has a new YouTube channel. So if we go into YouTube with WWDC, they announced the new Apple developer YouTube channel. So you'll see it only has 25,000 subscribers. It's brand new and has a ton of different tutorials. You'll see from three days ago, lots of different videos here. So if you want to check them out, it's available now, if you want to develop or just learn more about Swift or other things in general. Also, Apple will push those same videos for WWDC 2024 to YouTube for the first time, it seems. So it looks like we have this new channel and we'll have all that information here. If you don't want to access it through maybe your developer app, or maybe you just don't have an iOS or Apple device, you can still see it on YouTube. Now, as far as iOS 18 this week, well, because we know when WWDC is on the 10th, we can expect on June 10th to have iOS 18 beta one. So on that day, typically an hour or so after the event or within that time frame, we'll get that release. And there's new information as far as what to expect. Some new information came out that Apple maps could have a couple updates in the update where it allows you to finally sort of figure out what you want to do as a route on your own and also has topographical maps. Additionally, we heard that we'll be able to place icons wherever we want on the home screen, according to leakers. So we'll have to see if that's true, but we could have columns wherever we want with blank spaces, but I still expect there to be some sort of organization or snapping where it doesn't let you put it exactly where you want, but sort of makes it look organized, but a little bit different. So that's what I would expect among all the other things we've talked about already with iOS 18. Now, when it comes to the iPads, we're all waiting for iPads to be updated with the next pro and air models. It looks like we could get them in early May. Initially, many thought it would be this month on the 26th, but it looks like May is when it's going to release early May. And I think that would coincide with iOS 17.5. This was according to Mark Gurman, and he actually said that iOS 17.5 beta one is still in the works, planning to be sort of finished up this coming week. So we could finally see a beta as it's been a very long time since we've actually had a new beta. So I would expect it this coming week, probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. But at this point, we just don't know 100% but it seems to make sense that we would have it maybe on April 2nd or 3rd with a release sometime in May to go along with those new iPads and other products. Apple continues to work on it. Of course, they're working on iOS 18 as well. Also, we could see in between here in iOS 17.4.2, maybe just to bring everyone up to speed with the previous re-release or revision or something different completely. I thought maybe we'd need that with that security issue, but it looks like Apple's fixed that. As far as iOS 17.5, I've mentioned before where we could have some updates to maybe the podcast widget where it matches the background like it did in some of the earlier betas of iOS 17.4, possibly updates to Safari, the clock, and more, as well as SharePlay for maybe your HomePod and Apple TV. 
All of those things hopefully are expected. As far as iOS 17.4.1 revision or re-release or just the regular release in general, I'll specify which one, but in general, most people say that it's fixed a lot of issues. The alarm going off in the morning is fixed for me. I haven't had an issue since installing the first version of iOS 17.4.1. Many people say AirPods connectivity seems to be improved for most. We'll give it a second, see if it connects here. But with all these devices, sometimes it takes a little bit and it looks like, well, I guess it's not, but my battery's not dead here. And it connected to this iPhone first. So that's great. And I'm happy to see that. Other things that are working well, AirDrop seems to be working just fine. So if I AirDrop it maybe to the 15 Pro Max right here. Let's see if it airdrops without a problem. Both of them are on 17.4.1. It airdropped and there it is. Also, it seems that it's fixed some stutters with the revision version. So people were having little stutters or sort of micro lag throughout. It seems like those are fixed. The dimming bug, however, is not fixed for me. So you'll see the wallpaper dimming bug, again, is not 100% fixed. It sort of desaturates on its own. As far as security updates, I wanted to mention those before we talk about the remaining bugs. But if we go in here, the security updates have been updated with two security updates for iOS 17.4.1. They did not add additional updates when they had the revision. So we just have Core Media and WebRTC, both are identical, where they both say processing an image may lead to arbitrary code execution. To fix it, an out-of-bounds write issue was addressed with input validation or improved input validation. Both of those are fixed. On this update, nothing additional for 17.4.1 revision. As far as remaining bugs, well, notifications for some apps are not showing, such as Twitter, or they're very slow. However, that could be just due to the app, X, or Twitter in general. Not really sure. There's been a couple reports of people trying to install iOS 17.4.1 revision, and they've actually had their install crash or sort of brick their phones where they had to restore the phone altogether and start over or restore from a backup. I actually had an issue where it was giving me an error at first, but I rebooted the phone and it seemed to fix it. So right now I'm not really having any issues. Also, the scrolling bug is still there. If we go into photos, if I go into a video I've recorded and I scroll, you'll see it still stutters as I scroll through. It's not smooth. So as I move it, it just sort of jumps around altogether. I'm not sure why that does that, but they haven't fixed that yet. Also that bug for editing on standby mode appears to still be there. So if we have our iPhone, maybe on a charger here wirelessly, we shut off the display, give it a second here to go into standby mode. Once it's in standby mode, if we press and hold, if you've changed the background, it doesn't let you edit it, even with this latest update. So if I swipe through maybe to this clock, press and hold, tap on it, it doesn't do anything. I can't edit it. This is a bug that's pretty annoying. It's not really the end of the day for it, but you can't change the colors or anything else since it's stuck. So unfortunately they haven't fixed that yet. Also the volume slider bug came back for some people. So for some people it returned, not just on the revision, but just in general. And I've heard about the files app being a problem for one person. So I'm not sure if that's widespread. It's been fine for me, but let me know if you have an issue in the comments below. As far as overall connectivity, I haven't really heard any issues this week, but there were some issues last week where that seemed to be related to cell carriers around the nation. So far, it seems to be pretty solid for most, not a hundred percent, depending on who your carrier is, but I even have better signal tonight. And I typically have one bar where I am right now. So it looks to be a little bit better for me. It's been working as expected. As far as camera improvements, I haven't noticed anything. I did hear of a bug for some people where sometimes if you'd rotate like this, it would sort of black out the screen if you were in portrait, but it seems to be pretty good here. And here's a few samples like I do every week to give you an idea of what it looks like. I don't think they've really changed anything. It looks pretty good overall. So let me know if you've experienced any differences with the camera or any changes whatsoever. As far as overall performance, while well, most people report it's quite good with 17.4.1, not just the revised version, but overall it seems to be very smooth with the exception of one phone. And that seems to be older iPhone 10 Rs. I've heard some people say that they've had some issues there, but with iPhones such as the iPhone 11 scrolling, if we just go back to home on both, scroll up, things are nice and smooth. Most people report good performance and with the revised version, for some reason, again, it takes care of some of those micro stutters that some were having. As far as overall heat, well, this is mixed depending on who you ask, but with the revision version, 
Almost every single person says that it's fixed any issues they've had with the overall heat. It's stayed nice and cool. It hasn't been overly hot. They can use it while it's charging and it's not super hot. And I've noticed the same with this phone today with 17.4.1. So it seems to stay nice and cool and much cooler than it did before. However, let's take a look with the thermal camera since we have the previous version, but keep in mind this was actually sitting there doing nothing and this one was on. So it is a little bit warmer. So you'll see we're at about 88 degrees Fahrenheit height or 89 degrees. And then on the one that I haven't been using with the non-revised version, we're at about 83 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, in Celsius, we're at about 31.8 degrees or 32 degrees Celsius. And then on the one I haven't been using 28 0.7 degrees Celsius. So overall, again, it's not super hot to the touch or anything. It feels nice and cool and it's well within what it should be, especially just from me holding it. Of course, it's going to warm up. As far as the overall benchmarks, let's take a look at those. If we go into Geekbench 6, you'll see we have 2,939 for single core, 7,131 for multi-core. This is actually a little bit lower than what I had the other day, and I ran it earlier when I was charging, and that was probably not a good idea, so it was a little bit lower as it was warm. But again, it's slightly lower. It's well within what it should be, within a few hundred anyway. As far as the overall battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And it's improved for most people on the revision. It depends who you ask though. If we go into battery, battery health, you'll see I'm down to 99% and I have 146 cycles. You can see all the additional details here with coconut battery on the Mac. And if we take a look at the last 10 days, well, today actually wasn't great. I had three hours and 40 or 58 minutes of screen on time, four hours and 29 minutes of screen idle time the day before. A little bit less so i used almost my entire battery i had to charge before this video however some people on the revision have incredible battery life so let's take a look at that and thanks to cameron for sending this in and on his 15 pro max he has just over 50 percent battery usage and he has eight hours and 50 minutes of screen active time i actually took a look at this to make sure the screen wasn't on he didn't use it while charging and you can see it here again eight hours and 59 minutes so from about 9 a.m to almost 9 p.m. on and off, he was using it. That's pretty great overall. So depending on the day, it goes up and down. The previous day used 74% or 75% and had seven hours and four minutes of screen active time. So overall, this is performing much better on the revision for some reason for some people. Most people actually say it's much better. My experience shows it's a little bit better, but again, I have some odd issues with mine. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.4.1 revision, well, if you have a computer, you definitely could do that, but I would just wait for the next release at this point, as it seems Apple's probably going to do something either over the air or within a couple weeks, push out different betas, and maybe we'll have to wait a month for the public version, but I would expect something in between. As far as what you had to say about the overall experience, let's take a look at some of the comments. Chris Palmer 4983 said, I've been using iOS 17.4.1 regular on my iPhone 15 Pro. Battery life is good overall. I do have some idle battery drain. I usually experience 5% drain overnight. I still easily get an all day battery life with moderate use. I haven't experienced any major bugs. It seems Apple has been better with this release. In my experience, it has all of the major glitches worked out. PHER7664 says, revision has been better on my 14 pro so far less heating and a bit better battery life cw morris says i was having an issue with the auto brightness and overall dim screen after 17.4.1 on the 15 pro max with the revision update that seems to have been repaired never had that issue on the 15 pro max battery life is still great so far justin 007 says everything is well and good good battery no bugs iphone 13 128 gigabyte blue ios 17.4.1 matt mills 3443 says 14 pro max re-release battery life seems pretty good off the charger at 6 a.m it's now 9 a.m and still at 88 percent no bugs to complain about at the moment really enjoying the update super smooth magnificent production said i'm on the revision version and i've noticed a significant improvement in the battery life of my 14 pro max i'm a heavy user of my phone and at the end of the day i was on 40 percent battery which is a radical update indeed seven people gave that a like and then below that master 0016 said same with me literally the same result also on 14 pro max on the revision i'm loving it so that's everything with ios 17.4.1 and ios 17.4.1 re-release 
abilities. Let me know your experience in the comments below. And if you found any other features or changes, I'd love to hear from you there as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.